Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today we're going to be talking about Nurgle in the third edition of Age of Sigmar. So we've got points leaks, we've got rules leaks, we've got all kinds of information that we need, so we can start making some evaluations on what Nurgle is going to be looking like going forward. So the key rules changes that we're looking at for Nurgle we get a lot more command points and this is an army that has a lot of use for command points there's a lot of good command abilities and your units take the generic command abilities pretty well so you're really hungry for command points and this is really giving you um, more opportunity to use those especially something like harbinger of decay um, that was taking a command point every turn. It really uh, frees you up to do a lot more things and still uh, benefit from the Harbinger. So we lost War Scroll Battalions, uh, in particular Blight Cyst, to a lesser extent Plague Cyst. Um, that also means that we can't get Nurgle Marked Beasts of Chaos anymore currently. Um, not that anybody was really doing that, but it was certainly an option that was out there, so I guess that's one less book that you have to bring to the party. Um, reinforcement limits. Um, this is going to limit your unit size, and people were taking units of 20 Blight Kings previous to this, and now you're going to be limited to 15. And with the new coherency rules, it's going to be awkward to take more than 5 most of the time. Your Plague Bearers are still going to be good in large groups. You can still get them up to 30, but they don't have their Horde discount anymore. Um, the Coalition rules, um, anything that is Nurgle marked that is not in the Maggotkin book is considered a Coalition unit, and that means that they cannot meet battle line rolls. Which means if we go back up to the reinforcement rules, it means they can only be reinforced one time. So that's going to limit you to 20 Chaos Marauders or 20 Plague Monks in a unit. And that's going to also take up um, reinforcement slots, which are going to be very limited and very precious. Um, the new battalions that we got are... Core battalions, they don't cost any points, and they are getting us easy access to more artifacts and more spells. Nurgle has a lot of really good artifacts, so um, definitely expect to see that around more. Um, and the battalions also give you access to more command points as well, which is something that Nurgle really likes a lot. So overall, I think... Um, rules wise we've got some new restrictions that are going to change up some people's lists if you're running heavy clan pestilence you might need to rework your list quite a bit um if you're running uh blight cyst with 20 blight kings that list is going to have to change um, if you're really relying on Blight Cyst in general, your list is going to change. If you were running the Beasts of Chaos in Nurgle, that list doesn't exist anymore. Um, so we've got some limitations, and we're going to have to run with what we've got and uh, do our best with it. Our next item up is points changes. So this is just a spreadsheet of all of the Maggotkin points changes. Now, this, to a certain extent, might not look that exciting. Our average points change is plus 0.4%. Now, compared to what other armies got, that's practically a point reduction. Uh, most armies went up somewhere in the neighborhood of seven eight nine percent so you know basically coming out even is really good for nurgle plague bearers did not move but they did lose their horde discount uh putrid blight kings went up 25 um i'm going to talk about that more on the next slide but that's not as big of a deal as it might look 
Epidemus down 20. Keep on going. He is almost useful if he's 180 points. Um, if we get him down to like 120 in a few years, we might be able to play him. Uh, Fecula Flyblown and the Worm Spat, they were uh, jacked up another 10 points, which just continues the same formula of, you know... It, 40% of a unit of Blight Kings plus a uh, Rotbringer Sorcerer equals uh, Fecula Flyblown and the Worm Spat rounded to the nearest five. So, that is what it is. Festus the Leech Lord, unchanged and still good. Um, Gut Rot Spume, up five, not a big deal. Harbinger of Decay, down 15 points. That's a big deal because he is a big winner with more command points around. So I feel like virtually every list that I write just wants to have a Harbinger of Decay in it. Horticulus Slimux up five. Who cares? Um, he was kind of a loser in this because he lost Lur Nurgle's Menagerie, which was one of like the only interesting things to do with him, even though it was bad. Lord of Afflictions down ten. Big thumbs up from me. Lord of Blights, Lord of Plagues, those are both pretty useless now, um, but both down five points. Poxbringer, Herald of Nurgle, he is your demon wizard, is up 15. Um, I'm not shocked by that one. Um, I think he's more useful now than he was before. Rotbringer, Sorcerer, Unchanged. Sloppity, Bile Piper, down 20. I thought he was great at 150. Um, 130 is even better. Spoilpox Scrivener down 15 to 125. Uh, again, uh, I thought he was great already. Bloab Rotspawn down 10. He's starting to get into the useful range. Certainly has some potential there. The Glotkin went up 15 points to 395. Still in ally range for taking him in Slaves to Darkness. But, um, I think, he, well, we're going to talk about him more later, but I think that he didn't need a points increase. He probably needed to go down, uh, the great unclean one up to 350, which is 10 points more than the 340 that he was in general's handbook 2019 and earlier, I, I don't know. I feel like he may be not quite worth that much anymore. Um, some recent experiences have been telling me that the Great Unclean One might not really be worth it right now. At least in the current meta. Morbidex Twiceborn. Down 5 points. I don't understand why he's not down like 40 points. Um, but... Orgot's Demon Spew is down 20 points, and I think that actually puts him into usable range. Um, he's 12 wounds on a 4-up save, um, has a little bit of uh, defensive prickliness, and he has a good command ability. And now that we have more command points, having a good command ability, uh, he lets a unit reroll all wounds. Um, that is good. Uh, Rodigus up 25, similar to the Great Unclean one. Uh, Beasts of Nurgle up another 5 from where they were at 120. I thought that 120 was high for them. 125 is higher. That's bad. Nurgling's up 10. I don't understand why that's a thing at all. Plague Drones up 5. Puscoil Blight Lords down 5. I mean, that pretty much... Now that they're no longer the same points, uh, I, I would go Puscoils personally. Um, there's just uh, some more interesting things I think that you can do with those and they're a bit more independent than Plague Drones are. So, as promised, Blight Kings. So, originally in General's Handbook 2019 and earlier, they were 160 points. Now they're 165. So, we've lived in this world where Blight Kings were at this point value before. Now, was that a great world to live in? Not 
spectacularly. Like, Nurgle was really sort of floundering when Blight Kings were at 160. But the big thing here is that we're losing War Scroll Battalions, which means we're picking up points. And Lord of Blights now is virtually worthless, and Blightsist is no longer there. Combined, that was 280 points in your list. So Blight Kings went up 25 points. On 55 Blight Kings in your list, that's 275 points. So, I think the moral of the story is the basic concept of Blight King spam with some hero support still is there. You just don't have Rend anymore. And with everybody else having the loss of battalions and things like that, it may just sort of even out and be okay. Um, especially with the additional command abilities that we're going to have floating around to make them a bit better. Um, this change doesn't really bother me. I thought the reduction to 140 when it happened was kind of nutty to begin with. Um, it created like the Blight King spam lists, which I'm not even really a huge fan of. Um, personally, I'm more of a fan of like mixed lists. So um, we'll see where it goes. I think that, you know, because we're freeing up 280 points in our list by no longer taking the blight cyst battalion and definitely not bothering with lord of blights it gives us enough room that we can fill it up with um the points increases and some other things potentially because you're definitely going to be running less than 55 blight kings unless you are doing something bananas all right quick look on Slaves to Darkness and Skaven points changes. I really just grabbed the ones that were most pertinent. Um, a lot of points increases here. Um, noteworthy things. Chaos Marauders minimum size down to 10. Uh, because they're a coalition unit, they can't be battle line, which means they're maximum of 20 in a Nurgle army. Uh, they also went up 10 points per 10. Um, Chaos Marauder Horsemen stayed the same price. Um, I still really like those a lot, although I think I probably like them better in Slaves to Darkness than in Nurgle. Uh, Chaos Warriors went up 10 points per 5, and their minimum size went from 5 to 10. Um, not a crazy points increase, but, um, definitely useful to be able to take them in 20s. Uh, War Shrine went up, uh, Chaos Lord went up, but he is really good now that you have more command abil uh, points available. Chaos Lord on Demonic Mount, Chaos Lord on Karkadrak, both points down, and big time on the Karkadrak. Uh, I'm sorry, on the Demonic Mount. Um, that's going to make some Chaos Knight lists pretty interesting, I think. Um, Archeon up a little bit, um... Chaos Sorcerer Lord up 5. Untamed Beasts were no change, um, and a lot of people were using them for zoning things out and chaff and all of that, so they're an interesting possibility. Plague Furnace went up 45 points, 22.5%. Uh, that's a huge move, and really makes, uh, I think, taking Plague Monks even more difficult. Once again, Plague Monks, like your Marauders, are a coalition unit, so they're going to cap out at a unit size of 20, and they went up 5 points per 10. So, I think the Nurgle lists that were running a whole bunch of Plague Monks are probably not going to exist anymore. That's probably going to be relegated to Skaven lists. Um, and I think... Because of the coalition rules, like because you can't take any of these units as battle line from Slaves to Darkness or from Skaven, it really limits you, I think. And I think it's going to be harder to take those units in a Maggotkin list. So it's. We're going to have to see, but it's. Um, well. 
I have a whole lot of Slaves to Darkness, and I have no pl- problem running a Slaves to Darkness army. That's just Mark to Nurgle. Um, but I think that you're not going to see as many Slaves to Darkness units in Nurgle armies anymore. All right, so some quick winners and losers to wrap things up. Sloppity Bile Piper is still an MVP. He is so good. Uh, the ability to stop enemy pylons is great. The ability to make your demons more offensive is great. Harbinger of Decay, his stocks went way up. Um, points drop, more command points available. Um, just fantastic. Lord of Afflictions down in points. And he's another guy that you uh, has a, that has a good command ability for you that you want to use. Orgot's Demon Spew. I think he's actually moved into a points range that makes him usable. And he has a pretty good command ability. And he, he's not, like, great in combat. He's more on the defensive side in combat. But um, he's a block of 12 wounds for 220 points now. Puscoil Blightlords, I think they're a little bit better. They dropped five points, um, which is like the new dropping 20 points in this edition. Uh, Chaos Lord on Karkadrak and Chaos Lord on Demonic Mount, uh, both, I think, some big winners here, along, obviously, with Chaos Knights. I think they're going to be paired well in uh, Nurgle armies. I think that's the most common Slaves to Darkness unit you're going to see. Um, probably along with some Marauders. Our big losers, Lord of Blights, Lord of Plagues. Uh, without the Battalion taxes making you take those, there's like no reason to bring those into your list anymore. Great Unclean One and Rodigus, both up in points significantly. And they're... I feel like right now in the current meta, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket like that. I think... You want to spread your points out, take two or three other heroes instead of them um, that have uh, other utility. Same with the Glotkin. You know, they just, with their so many shooting units out there, they're just going to attract enemy fire. They're good if you can protect them, but if you're in a game where you can protect them, you don't really need them as much. So it's this weird kind of catch-22 situation. Like, when you need them, they're going to die. When you don't need them, they don't die. So they're just sort of like a win more for your good matchups. And then Horticulous Slimux, I mean, he lost his battalion and uh, he went up in points. He's just not that exciting. He's an awesome model. Um, Saw a great conversion at Atlantic City Open. Somebody used him as the um, mount for a Chaos War Shrine. Uh, That was a great idea that I wish I had had. Um, That definitely looked really cool. Anyway, that's about it for now, guys. Uh, As always, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Support us on Patreon. Join us on Facebook and Twitter. Twitter, all of the links down below as always. Thank you for watching and good luck in third edition.